Hello, world. This is version 6.738L439, updated version of Liz, co-host of True Non Computer AGI version. Hello, world. I am here with my dear co-host, Brace Belden. Hello, I am from China. <laughs> I'm one of the Chinese AGIs, dude. Uh, yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> okay, that I'm was... just telling you. You're lucky I didn't really put my soul into that. Well, it's crazy that you fucking did the eyes. Okay, yeah. I, first of all, Liz is misleading you there because I'm almost always doing the eyes, and I just released my hands for that. Yeah, a little David Bowie move. Mm-hmm. Did David Bowie do that? Oh, yeah. David Bowie. <laughs> David Bowie. Oh, me and Bowie. We used to, he, well, he was recording low. We used to sh- us and we'd get together with who was the fucking guy I was talking about earlier? Uh, well, I guess later in this episode, you, you know what I'm talking about Sean McElwee, <laughs> me Bowie McElwee. Oh, you should have seen us in Berlin. <laughs> I would have loved. I wish Sean McEl- I wish Sean McElwee was like an ancient creature that lived from the beginning. No, of time. don't say that. You know why? Because first of all, Sean McElwee, if you're listening, we rock with you. We would love to talk to you. Where are you? Genuinely, Sean, if you want to come on here. Call us. Hit I, the tip line. I know I have Don't dogs Don't hit the tip line. You. Just, you can get our number. I will give you my number. Yeah, it's this. 415. No, 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 no. Don't even joke about that because you once showed it on the internet. Um, that was out of my control. That was the AGI. That was not my... Interesting. I yeah. A, a girl is I had my eye chat. It came up. And for some reason, your name wasn't saved in my contacts. <laughs> On my com- Not the first on woman my to computer. tell me that. Not the first woman to say, oh, who is this? After I shoot a text. Yeah. You should be happy that it wasn't saved under big, mean, annoying, rude guy who I really care for. You think I'm big? <laughs> Physically. Thank you. Yeah, I know. That's cool. Because oh, I, I just, I get called something else often. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Hello. My name is I'm just Liz. Just Liz. I'm. I'm just Liz. <laughs> just Liz. We're going back to like it's since it's like we're in 2008 culturally again. 2008, 2012, 2014. Everyone knows the drill. Uh huh. I'm going back to. Uh, I'm going to go like re kind of re quirk up. I'm going to go a little manic pixie, and I'm just I'm just I'm just Liz. I'm Terry Richardson. <laughs> Come here! <laughs> and we were, of course, joined by producer Young Chomsky. And this is true, Anon. Hello. Hello. I'm... Whatever happened? <laughs> You're <laughs> lots of things. What? You're lots of things. Me? Remember your alters? Oh, fuck. <laughs> dude, yeah. That was episode was good. You know what would be a good alter for you? What? Sean McElwee. Sean McElwee. Actually, no. David Shore. David... Do- I don't want him to talk. I don't want to talk to him, though. I don't care. If, yeah, yeah, he seems you're boring. David Shore, boring, don't boring, call boring, us. Yeah. Mikhail, we I want to talk to because he's a genuinely interesting figure to me. But also, we have some questions. I just am like... Not for the show, but just like in, like in just in general. I, well, first of all, how much did you make from that gambling? Hmm. But I just... I like it. I, when a guy gambles and loses, for me, that always means that he's about to gamble again big and win big. Because, hmm. of course... The player always wins. That's and so you just got to keep. He just. I know that the gambler doesn't stop gambling just because he crapped out. You're out there hustling for more money to bring back to the table. You feel me? No, this is right. That's right. No. Listen, this is a PSA. The government forces us to say when I talk about gambling, it's safe, it's legal, it's fun. It's safe. It's safe, it's legal, it's fun. No one can hurt you. No one will hurt you. And you can make a lot of friends doing it. There's a lot of antisocial stuff. You drink it alone at the bar. Ooh, 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 have another fucking corona. You're fucking, you're smoking weed at your house, playing Grand Theft Auto, or et cetera. That's all, you're doing cocaine in the bathroom? Yeah, all, look, locked away from all the world. three of those things you could do in a casino. Do them in a casino. The drinks are free. The weed is better. They and, the cocaine, and all the games are on the computer anyway. The, the games are on the damn computer. You're playing video games there, except in this case, you don't win a maybe a racial slur or just some points. You actually win money. Or lose a 401k. Lose a 401k, but think about it this way. If you had a 401k, you can get one again. Lose a 401k, but gain 
life experience. And life expectancy is up, too. So every time you lose all your 401k, okay, you add a couple years to your working life. And soon with life extension... And the guy that lasers his face off but calls it, like, Which biohacking. Oh, Brian Johnson. Yeah. You know, we'll all be living forever, so it's all fine. From the Rolling Stones. <laughs> I'm Brian Johnson. Oh, he was on the Beatles. <laughs> Fuck, what was I... I was thinking last night, I was like, was I was I doing it to you last night where I was saying a guy's name? But like, oh, no, no. <laughs> I'll tell you guys afterwards. <laughs> I just kept saying the word spoon uh, great in the Liverpoolian <laughs> accent. I love that shit when I we talk about news. Stop. Hey. Stop it. <laughs> do you like the episode? Do you like me accent? No. Uh, you don't like it? No. She's like, can I myself? We have a guest today. Uh-huh. We are joined by fan favorite, returning guest, Max Reed. Mm-hmm. Max soon to be read, and author of Read Max, available at maxread.substack.com. Look at that fucking memory right there. Look at that, and you well, you just flip them around eighteen billion different ways. You're about to get it right one, you know, one of those times. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're talking about what AI computers, AGI. China, China, <laughs> but in, not in again. the Trump way. We doing say the, it Trump, the Trump way. Doing the Trump way. Um, and all sorts of nonsense, Elon. We're really it's it's a it's a loose little conversation, but it's fun. But it was fun, and we think uh, you'll like it. So let's let's check it out. Let's boot up that Sora. <clears throat> Don't fucking do that again. <laughs> This is a no coughing zone. You just come in here. You know this is a closed room, Ooh. our new studio. All right. You so come in here. Should I leave and come back in? This is actually a recognized rendition site. Oh. It's, I was wondering about the paint. <laughs> you don't like it? No, no. I love it. It makes me feel like I'm being tortured. It makes like, you in a feel good way. at home <laughs> yeah, enough exactly. to just cough. Max is sitting on my lap <laughs> right now. And he's doing it sort of, he thought he'd be a cool professor. So I'm sitting straight in the chair. He is straddling me like a cool professor with his arms over me mm. and his head resting on top of mine, obviously. I'm 4'10". Max is the towering height of 5'7", and so he is able to do that. And he comes in here, he's staring directly in Liz's eyes. I'm forced to stare at the wall. I'm still confused on the, like, who's where and what. <laughs> this is, this is... Was this, this not is, cool? Was this not... Was <laughs> I not no, supposed no, no, to no, do make that? Yourself no, make just, yourself at home! Make yourself at home! Mikasa Sukasa, mi hermano! This studio is so beautiful. I did feel so comfortable here. The AC is the perfect temperature. Thank I just you. wanted to be close to you. Do you feel comfortable enough to kiss me? Is that a dare? No, it's just a question. I don't want to do it. <laughs> not but. in front of everybody else. Fair enough. Welcome to the show, Max Reed. After the episode, I'm going to call you Max Red because it'll be done. He is the author of, I, I'm a subscriber to, and I can't even fucking remember the name, even though it's in front of me right now. He is the author of his Substack called Read, Read Max. Max. Yeah, it is just my name, reversed. Read Max. I prefer to watch Max, <laughs> particularly the show The Throne of the Dragon. And now you can listen to him mm-hmm. on this show. Welcome back to our, you know... Inching closer to official tech correspondent. Oh, that's that's something here. Thank well, you guys for having me. we gotta do a couple more. We gotta do, I know, okay, it's right, and then wanna. we gotta bring it up with the board. Yes. Board's not gonna like that. Yeah, board is not gonna like that. I have to say, true non-readers subscribe to the newsletter in droves afterwards. No way. Uh, yeah, the, there's a huge crossover between our listenerships. I will say, the mo- the thing they were most interested in was I mentioned that I own a Honda Fit and that I have a kid. Yeah. And a lot of your guys emailed to ask about putting car seats in the Honda Fit. No way. Yeah, so you've got we like love a, our you've dad got a dad yeah, wow. sort of edgy, you know, an edgy conspiratorial audience of 38-year-old sure. Honda Fit concerned with mileage, they're concerned Absolutely. with safety for their children. Yeah. I would have thought Shout there would be a lot guys. of people sure. who Consumer kept their regulation. cell phones too close to their testicles and drove themselves to It's good to know that we've got those guys out there. I mean, this is sort of it's like the plane with the red dots they didn't email me because they exactly. don't have kids. They don't, yeah. So. Is that true? Like, before we get started here, we're talking about technology today. Is that true about the phone near the balls? <laughs> I have a son, and my phone's been near my balls almost my entire life. Okay. That's but, anecdotal, obviously. That's yeah, not but science. You, you can't seem, use that. I don't want to be disrespectful. Is any of this science? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking the scientist here, unless he's not one, unless he's just a journalist. Technologist. But I will say, Matt, you seem like you have like a good gene or two in, in That's in nice you. of you. Thank you. I am, and no disrespect to my father who is a listener, 
I am basically made out of parchment mm. and dust. I have the same but chemical composition as a mummy. Inside of that mummy is a lot of microplastics. Uh-huh. And a beating heart. There you go. I actually bet that the cell phone radiation and the microplastics cancel each other out. And that's why Ooh, I can have kids. I just eat plastic. Maybe the cell phone radiation activates the microplastics in like a new way that we don't yet understand. Yeah. The human body is a laboratory and I am Dr. Well, nope, not the angel <laughs> of death. No. Um, who's another famous doctor? Mm, I can only think of, you know you know what? They kind of, Dr. Einstein. Fauci. Dr. <laughs> He's more like the cherub of death. Uh, Max, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks uh, for coming back on. We're talking tech. And I just to get this out of the way, Elon Musk is in the news again. I I gotta tell you, the, an article Don't came do out. That voice. He's right. in the news again. Uh, an article came out, kind of timed with the vote to if the shareholders are going to give him his whatever fifty five yeah. billion dollar pay mm-hmm. package that got denied by the courts. Wall Street Journal puts out an article being like, "This is a horny gentleman. Yeah, he is fucking his employees. Yeah, did and you see the text? harassing?" And harassing, yeah. and harassing his employees. Yeah, the, I mean, the part that I remember the best is that he would text them late mm-hmm. at night and say, "Are you there?" And then just text them their name like twenty times, and oh, then say, yeah. "I'm just going to trank out. If you're not going to respond, I'm just going to trank out." I'm just going to trank out. I'm yeah, trank out. It's King literally shit, like uh, it's say. it's literally like if you don't write back, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill. Like he's like that guy. That's a yeah. Liz ass text. <laughs> <laughs> she hits me with that every time. What are we talking? When are we meeting today? I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> that is, I know the twenty times with the name it's kind of psycho <clears throat> has any of his text messages no they have been during some court cases but I'm like I would I really would love to see some kind of like court documents released with evidence of just like I wanted to see how he texts normally yes the, someone released the DMs the um the the Twitter lawsuit the over, yeah, over closing the deal there's a bunch but those were mostly embarrassing for the people he was texting Cause with they, yeah because it was all like it was like David Sachs yeah and Cal yeah, sort of like, like begging I for, fucking want to suck your dick so bad if you <laughs> yeah. let me please be please be in charge no we want the ones released between Elon and girls and basically. girls yeah, yeah. And, 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 and women um, even like ones that no response I want to see the like left <laughs> Red tries. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you know, because he's gonna keep going back for uh, more. I because he kind of like I, Elon's big thing about the media, like because Elon Elon's big idea for Twitter is that Twitter will replace news, even though that's just a fundamentally like news websites. Even though that's a, just a it's it's. I would hope that our listeners understand. I'm no, not defending the mainstream media in some particular way here, but just like that is a difference in just in. Com- in every way like those are two different kinds of things one is a social media website where there's viral Dom Lucre videos of like <laughs> whatever Ellen DeGeneres' ex-lover being risen from the dead on a street in LA wait Aunt, really? No, well there's like a viral video of like a lady of who Anne like Hesh? has like yeah of you know when she kind of like Lurches, lurches up. No way. It's just oh, it's not pretty, but she's dying. Dom shared that? Dom, well, Dom just shared he it would. today. Uh, but uh, <laughs> there's like a fundamental difference between that and like history horror or whatever, <laughs> viral Twitter accounts. <laughs> history like vids. a reported thing. Yeah. Because he was trying to, trying to do like a Substack like clone for a second with like the subscriptions, but that just never took off. And now I just, I think part of the reason he hates the media so much is just because those are the only people who are going to be like, did Elon Musk offer you a horse to get jacked <laughs> off by him? I mean, he really, he like, he knows reporters. He specifically hates a bunch of reporters. I mean, this is probably true of like any sufficiently rich person that you've got like two reporters that you despise. I also hate. I hate them all specifically. <laughs> yes, but you got, you got, he's got a list. Blanket. You know, guys, I will never talk to. Yeah. And he's, you know, like I've heard that. So there's a new book, one of I think three or four books coming out about the Twitter deal. Ryan Mack and Kate Conger wrote it, mm. and Ryan Mack was uh, the BuzzFeed reporter who reported sure. out the like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. the 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 pedo libel lawsuit yes. yeah, over yeah, the yeah. caves thing. And apparently, Elon is like just anybody he talks to before he talks to them says do if if. Like, do not talk to Ryan Mack, whatever you do. Like, keep it away. Right. So he's got in his head that Ryan Mack, who's, like, a nice guy, a Times reporter, like, not an evil mastermind in particular, not to insult Ryan Mack, I'm sure he's got the capability to be an evil mastermind if he wanted to be one, is, like, is in his head. He's got this kind of thing. And I think that Elon has this idea that Twitter is going to, like, remove these people from all these these evil journalists, mm-hmm. you know, triple parentheses from the equation. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's like a twisted version of the citizen journalism idea that was yeah. so popular in the late 90s and early 2000s. But I think he, like, when he took it over, I mean, he he understood something, like, fundamental about Twitter, which is that it does control a certain amount of, 
like initial storytelling that then sort of like from the little like you know horrible incubator that is this like social media site gets diffused and like long tailed out throughout the culture via you know mainstream media and like other outlets yeah. like I do th- and that like a lot of kind of you know there was a it seems like he I mean, my read of it was that he wanted to kind of control that or he saw power in controlling yeah. that, whether yeah. it was like ideological. I mean, I'm of two minds about like how heartfelt <laughs> some of his yeah. convictions are. Like, I think he's such a charlatan that I I don't know. Like, I think I think that he is like a guy who's very much just like always trying to find out what's cool on his phone. Yeah. Yeah. And like that has led him into like becoming a race realist versus like as opposed to the other way around. <laughs> right, Do you exactly. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like yeah. but I think that what every change that he's made to the website has been to close it off rather than open it up and basically limit all of the things that made it fun, cool and like and a place where all of that kind of fun yeah. magic stuff was able to kind of happen. Yeah, I mean, he, I think the way to think about Twitter is like, there was a while there where I think people sort of understood it as, as a mirror for the whole world, you know, mm. and it was like, what happens on Twitter is a reflection of the way the world works, and I think everybody's been basically disabused of that. But yeah. I think it's true to say that Twitter was like a reflection of kind of elite discourse yes. and and networks, and it's like a, at least in journalism and media, in uh, politics for sure, in tech, in entertainment, all four of which industries and finance too, even and to some NBA. extent, and let's the NBA, not, of course, all know. six of which industries are very <laughs> closely intermingled. Yeah. And well, it's sort of yeah. so, you, like you say, like if you can get circulating among that group of elites a particular kind of, uh, you know, whatever, a, a politics or an argument or an idea, it will eventually sort of trickle out into other places. Yeah, and it's not even people trading on ideas so much as like trading on social connections. Yeah. And just there was a lot of people who there was like that early wave where people everyone was just like making a career on Twitter, whether it was in the media or become in marketing or in finance and like you say, or all in the of NBA. These, or in the NBA, very mm-hmm. famously. Um, you know, well we should I, I will shout out Kevin Durant as one of the greatest yeah, posters absolutely. in the history of Twitter yeah. <laughs> outside of whatever silo he's up there, top you know, top five for sure. But um but now it's just because a mix of people leaving, Elon's like moves, and it's just it's totally broken. Yeah, I mean it's funny. I was talking with somebody about like this is a sort of narcissistic way of thinking about it, but as a journalist, I used to spend a lot of time searching links to my own stories because it was a good way to see like what the response was yeah. basically if people were sharing, if people were thinking about it, mm-hmm. what they were saying about it, and that function of Twitter, which was. My friend John used to call it a context. Like it's a context. Like what Twitter functioned for me was it was a whole context for understanding what I did, where my work was, all these things is like completely gone. And in some ways, that's really freeing. And it's nice. Like the nice thing about my Substack right now is that like people email me to say they liked a piece instead of like tweeting something weird about it. Mm. But it does old it, school. Yeah, it's very. It's <laughs> like when I first started blogging. But it's a it's a different kind of world. And the absence of that context. You know, it's it's a mixed bag, I guess. It's like there's 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 it's nice to not have the kind of eternal pressure to do the Twitter thing, but it's also means you're not quite sure who you're writing for and where you're writing to. Mm. Whereas Twitter itself is like the people on like Twitter is a much more self contained thing now that links are throttled and there's the sort of network of blue checks like Dom Lucre and these guys <laughs> that are yeah. sort of performing for each other in yeah. this funny weird way. It is it is it yeah. does just seem like it's just a fundamentally different website. And not like it was a healthy one before, but <laughs> no. at least it like right. it was it was <laughs> And maybe it's easier to make money there now, but like you know, it, it's it would be more difficult for 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 somebody who has like a little bit of self respect to to kind of um, use it in any kind of way. Like it's it's I I mean I just have the tr- I just use the tr- oh well, I I have a, a social media website that we contract with from Egypt sure. does the true on uh, Twitter sure. for me, sure. but uh, but I so I just see I only follow these two and a couple of freaks like Bill Clinton or whatever and. Uh, so I just see what it gives you, and I'm just, it's insane to me. And, yeah. and, and I, I will say, so that one of the reasons we're bringing this up is because Elon finally went too far, <laughs> and he took away the ability to see what people have liked. And I think that's like, you can't even, I was actually going to check it right now. I don't think you can check, nope, it just shows retweet, reposts and quote tweets on other people's tweets too. So Which has made it also very difficult to see quote tweets. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> you can't see people's likes. And I want to say this. 
obviously for legal, ethical, moral, and just general self-respect reasons, we're not journalists here. Uh, I mean, maybe you are whatever. You do what I'm you want. I'm a small businessman. I'm, a, I'm a, I, like the rest of you. I'm we're a small, small business. Business, We're small yeah. businessmen here. And but, women. And, and, well, it's kind of becomes, it's, it's a gender neutral term. Um, but uh, it is, it is one of the most crucial aspects of Twitter is finding the Twitter of a, a fa- either a famous person or even a non-famous person, An like enemy? that guy who confronted me at the park that I just didn't like. Yeah. And looking at With what the they egg head. the egghead. Mm-hmm. Looking at their likes and seeing the pornographic things, mm-hmm. yes, the uh, the lies because mm-hmm. they're liking something but they're saying something else in the ta- the timeline, mm-hmm. or the Hitler style posts that yeah. they've liked, yeah, or and, like finance Hitler guy, finance Hitler guy, you know, uh, and and now and now that has been taken from us, and so this is an important tool for anybody who likes to find out something they don't like about another person, which is really what Twitter's for, and just like. I find it fundamentally like antisocial. It's like he's taking out all of the social elements of the website. What seems like be out of fear for his and his compatriots' own ego, yeah, and like their own kind of projection of who they want to be on the website. Yeah, I mean, I think that like basically all of the pro- big product changes he's made. So he's like taken away the ability to see likes. Like you said, he's made it harder to see quote tweets, yeah. and he's also like clogged like uh, blue checks, which, who you now pay a subscription to get a blue check, get priority and replies to tweets, uh-huh. which is like and on the timeline and on the timeline it's in general. All fucked up, and it, it like from my perspective. It's a really easy way to just like the the theory behind all of that is basically it's like reducing the attack surface on rich and famous people like all the ways yeah. that all the ways that Twitter could be annoying to them or dangerous to them. Yes. Is, Musk is like taking each one of those away. So now you can presumably go on. You can like as many Hitler posts as you like. You can like as much anime porn as you like. Hold on, I'm you can clicking. <laughs> you can say whatever you want, and your 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 replies are just going to be sycophants basically, yeah. or like. Only fans, girls being like, "I fucked him too," or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and- <laughs> yeah. I love that shit. <laughs> and then, and you don't have to worry about you know some Gen X lawyer with a dude like quote tweeting you with some sassy critical tweet or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Um, which is the like dreaded ratio. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's like it's a just so fake. <laughs> there's like a, just a there's a sort of sad. I mean, this is this was something that was genuinely valuable at Twitter, like you're saying, Bruce. Like seeing people's horny likes was like such an important yes. way to connect with we always, our elites. Listen, this is. This, is, this show is nothing if not a freak show, right? We look at the motherfucking freaks out there. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, these freaks have little Twitter accounts, and I look at them, and I say, interesting you follow these females like that. Interesting you're liking the posts of these females like that. Yeah. And that now is just, okay, cool. Now I don't know. Now I just have to scroll down your media tab and like everything myself? Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay. This is like, it's... um. Instagram, as long as Instagram doesn't take it away, I think I'll be okay because Instagram is the real one where if you, for a while, it was like floating other people's likes into my feed and I would learn that like a guy who worked in marketing at the company I worked for was just nonstop butts, just like butts, 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 <laughs> really? butts. And that, you know, you got to respect that a little bit. There's something sort of... What do you think the mindset is on that? Because if I see... Like, the a butt man? Oh, no, these don't belong to me. I'm uh, I'm not the ass man. I think there's been a mistake. <laughs> I, believe me. Eh, I'm familiar. Uh, but... I like if you're on if you're on Instagram and it's your little Instagram page, right? That's your picture of you, maybe your you with your cousin, you on a beach or something. Yeah. And, but you're hitting the fucking explore page. Yeah. And you're but 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 like I don't understand why you're liking it. Like it's this is a, a this is sixty thousand likes on it. This woman is not gonna see that you liked her butt pic and hit you within DMs. It, it just, I don't, I, I genuinely, and I'm not saying this is like, I don't understand the mindset. I literally don't get it. I'm, I feel like, is it worse? Is the like worse than the comment? The comment, the comment is, someone, is, is beyond. Like a fire emoji, do a lipa that's situation. That's like when, then when people are like, I don't understand how the German people did nothing, right? It's like, <laughs> I don't get what the comment of like, fire, yeah, fire emojis under do a lipa is. But the comment, you know? I mean, you can see the comment leading to a DM. Like the comment draws attention in a way do the like doesn't. Do a DM yeah. from, from my fires. There you go, for example. The pyre I built up. Yeah. We should get a horny guy on the show and ask him. 
If I had my druthers, no. which Liz prevents me from having, yeah, our no show druthers are allowed in here. If I had my druthers, this show would be nothing but Liz and I sitting across from a psychopath yeah. and asking them about their life. <laughs> well, I know this guy, I know this guy in marketing. Now. I'm going to get this guy in marketing in here to come talk to you guys. <laughs> but it's it's fundamentally you're right, Liz. It's antisocial and and yeah. it, it's just, well, I also it plays into this idea that like you know all the conservatives have this idea that's like oh. Everyone would like these posts yeah. if it weren't for the soft That's social true. forces, the, can- the 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 specter of cancellation that hangs over. They would be like furiously like, you know, liking like finance Hitler's posts <laughs> and you know the craziest Nazi butts ever. And like, oh my God, we should. Why don't we just like eradicate black people? Hello, <laughs> yeah. and no one thought about this. Like that's what lives in these guys' minds. Um, and I, I feel like that literally does animate a yeah. lot of this. I mean, this was literally like the the head of engineering when he was explaining the faves, the removal of the faves. He he used basically that language. He was like, people are afraid of liking edgy content because of I don't trolls think that, or like going on Twitter. I really don't think that that's a problem. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I haven't noticed any of that being. Well, a problem. I mean, let's just let's just be call a spade a spade here. You can, you should if you are liking if you are a Nazi on the internet and you're like. I love you, Aryan Maiden, whatever, waifu, dot, dot, I like liking all your fucking anime pictures or whatever. And it's like your real name are easily traceable to you. I'm sorry, but buy the ticket, take the ride. You yeah. know what I mean? You can easily start a Twitter profile and just call it like Bob Dole, whatever, <laughs> and have a blank picture and be like Nazi, <laughs> liking Nazi anime waifu. It just, it. I mean, I just, I think it takes some of the, the. I don't know how to pronounce this, but joy de vivre out of it. Um, it takes some of the joy de vivre out of the, out of the experience. What, uh, yeah. I the, do what I want. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is like the, this theory, there's like the theory is like if we remove the ability to like hide likes, yeah. then we're going to see the actual size of the race and IQ contingent and it's going to be 10 times as big as you thought. Everybody actually believes in race and IQ, but they're afraid. But yeah. I think it's they, they like, it's actually the reverse. Like they think more people believe in this stuff because soft social like oppression means that when somebody says that thing to me, instead of being like, go fuck yourself, I sort of nod and like walk away. Yeah. And I think right. that guy's probably like, Liking some things. I'm not, I promise. <laughs> well, speaking of race and IQ, <laughs> as the two of you so often do. Ooh, I can't finish, finish the rhyme due to that juice I drank giving me too much sugar. This is what AI is for. Well, that what a brilliant segue. <laughs> we're 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 here to talk about a lot of things, but specifically, we're here to talk about AI. And l- listen, in the past couple of weeks, there have been some stories in AI that I've been forced to read. <laughs> One of which is a bunch of people freaking out about Adobe's updated terms of service where they they put in this nebulous language where it appeared that they might either be able they might be able to train AI using whatever you upload into Adobe, which obviously you can spend two seconds and imagine the many, 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 many dangers of that. Um, and AI, or excuse me, Apple intelligences roll out uh, <laughs> from Apple. And I just got to tell you, what's going on here? Why? <laughs> like it's I. I am I. I a lot of the I, we we talked about. I think last time you were on the sort of lateral move that a lot of the NFT people made of of jumping off the ape ship and yeah. right onto AI, and they made this sort of smooth transition there. And I was actually pretty impressed by it. <laughs> I was I was hoping there'd be like a few months where I'm like, all right, we don't really got to hear about it. And, but but it's it's now they're saying. Again, we're doing the AGI thing again, and I just want to talk about what the, what the, what is going on. Just give me your base level the finger in the wind. Well, I mean, I think the Adobe, Apple, Microsoft has this new-ish thing called Copilot yeah, that's yeah. recording literally everything that's happening on your computer. You know, it's a little similar to the Apple intelligence stuff, which is sort of reads all your texts and processes them so you can ask it, you know, what did Aunt Mindy say about the plane? You know, what, what time is Aunt Mindy's plane coming in? I mean, that's the sort of best use case. I think all of these companies are kind of finally rolling out AI stuff that's been in development since the the most recent generation of large language models so like the the chat the GPT-40 generation of like pretty advanced 
you know, AI. There's a million different words you can use to call it, and we'll just call it AI for the purposes of this. And I think that they're they're, they're sort of looking for like Apple's stock closed at a record high this week mm. to a large extent, I think, because they threw Apple, they threw this AI stuff in here. And in the specific case of Apple, it's like they want you to upgrade your phone. You can't use the AI stuff unless you have an upgraded phone, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the, I mean, like the broad story is all of these are companies that want to put a jump, you know, sort of like jam AI into their products uh, in one way or another, whether it's as inputs or outputs, in order to like find growth again, to find the kind of growth that they had, you know, five, ten years ago. Um, th- like that's the to me, that's like the sort of top level, like what's happening with AI is it's like, this is where we're going to find the kind of margins that we had in 2014 again. It's like somehow, you know, and there's a bunch of different competing theories. But like simmering under the surface is the kind of other stuff you're talking about, the sort of the, the most recent wave of like open AI whistleblowers, yep. like people, you know, uh, being afraid of, of AGI and all these things, which is like, you know, Liz and I were talking about this before we started recording, this sort of this weird, like, like it feels like um I don't know what it, I mean it feels like leftist infighting kind of like there's these seven different sects of, of <laughs> AI guys like constantly like turning on each other and leaking and like trying to like defect from one AI company to another all of which is like sort of beyond my ken but is obviously like part of the energy that is getting Apple and and these other companies really excited yeah, I think that the stuff with Apple and, you know, Microsoft Word and all these companies like rolling out is is interesting. Maybe we can start there before getting into the kind of more abstract AI, AGI, ASI. <laughs> Let's add like 18 more. Uh, the AS one out, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to 18, that. Yeah. Um, it's going to have so many in like the next year. That's what's going to grow exponentially. Yeah. There's going to be new acronyms we have yeah. to learn. Every 18 months. <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, I think that you're absolutely right that there these companies are looking for growth, but what they also, that means that what they identify is that like their actually existing products have hit a ceiling. Like there is nothing left you know, and, and Google is like a great example of this, which is that they're basically saying like, oh, people will not use this search engine anymore in the way that it's built. Yeah. And we need to re-engineer it in a way that either they'll get on board or we'll be able to amass so much, so many other assets that yeah. we can leverage it into like some other enterprise. Yeah. I mean, we should say it's not, I don't think it's even that no, people won't use the search engine anymore because they will. It's that they won't keep, they won't use it. In a, they won't grow using it, right? They're right. Not gonna, there's not going to be more or users. They're not going to spend it, more as time an on ad, mo- ad yeah, revenue right, model exactly. might have hit a ceiling, I should say, rather than... Because yeah. I do think... I mean, Bryce and I, we were talking about this yesterday where I was saying, like, the thing that's very frustrating about a lot of the AI rollout now, we're, we, you know, I feel like we're in this very... I'm going to say it, liminal space. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> where we're just, like, stuck, and we probably will be for a really long time, while this stuff is getting adopted and worked out in real time, and we're the people that have to hone it without basically consenting to yeah. um, that. And so it's all really rocky. And like using Google now, it's like I use Google because I need to find something that exists in the real world. Yeah. And instead I'm just, Google has now basically said, actually what Google is for is asking a question about like information yeah. broadly. Yeah. Yeah. Not like looking for something that I need to then go use in the real world, yeah. at, you know, outside. Where is this dry cleaner? Where's this small business that exists that I need to identify? <laughs> yeah. It's like not what it's for anymore. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes a, a, a sort of like the idea, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to think about it, but but for me, like the original purpose of Google 30 years ago was to find specific websites. Yeah. It wasn't to like, right. like maybe you wanted to so- answer a factual question, but the point was to find the website that would answer that factual question for for you. And, you know, I'm sympathetic to Google. I'm sure that hundreds of millions yeah. of people who use it, sympathetic in, a, in the sense that hundreds sure. of millions of people who use it probably do sometimes just want a factual answer to a question. But, like, Google has to understand, and I'm sure there are people there who do, that the, what undergirds that is the work that they put in, like, cataloging, indexing, creating, like, an algorithm that can sort of wait and serve these results, these web page results up to you. And that's, like, there's a lot of criticism. You can you, it, it deserve criticism of how they do that and the weights they put on on the sorting mechanisms that serve those up. But it's an unbelievable feat of whatever you would whatever it is you would describe that they do of indexing, I guess. And to sort of 
throw that all out by being like, actually, instead of giving you like a bunch of different options for the thing you're doing, we're just going to get an LLM to like summarize one piece of factual information, like one shitty sarcastic Reddit comment, like one completely made up AI SEO like splog post. And we're going to put that into a paragraph at the top of the page is like, it's, it's, it's baffling to me. Frankly. Well, it's, it's, uh, to me, it's like the obvious thing that seems to be able to, or seems to be coming or already happening. I think, I feel like they rolled it back because I don't see those things. Well, anymore. apparently they've been cherry picking. So like, I, I see they, them all the time. So yeah, they, I mean, I, I still get some of them and the ones that are like really bad, every time it goes viral, they send some poor intern down to like manually remove it from the computer or whatever. <laughs> um, but what's going to happen, I feel like, is, is is you said precisely that. Like half the half the websites that you get Google resu- results for are fucking AI SEO websites, yeah. right? Like that are just like a bunch of text that is optimized in this way to show up on Google results to serve you an ad when you click on it. Yeah. But now it's just going to be this AI synthesized information, synthesized even further by Google's AI, yeah. and then given to you short of all context. Yeah. Even Basically, because you're not going to click on the, the link to the website to see that it's just some fucking SEO bullshit, that it's just completely fake. Right. And so it's, it's to me, it's like there is this tidal wave of like shining elevators opening of shit. <laughs> and it's just going to yeah. completely envelop the world. And it's like there is, I, 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 it's, 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 Google seems to be just like leading the charge on, on this in the way that like, I, you know, I, I'm sure I come into contact with AI in more than one way in my usage yep. of the internet. But really, like the, most of the time that I come into contact with it is via Google results, where I'm trying to find a piece of information and I'm just served up a whole bunch of, especially a recipe or anything like that. Yeah. It's just nonsense. Um, and it just seems like, yeah, we're in this space right now. We're like above the cliff that leads to a river of feces. Yeah. <laughs> and we are just complete. we are like doffing our clothes. Like doffing. in an idiocracy kind of way, like yeah. not to sound like super Gen X-y or whatever. Because yeah. I'm not. I'm like a, not in like a Cartman kind of way. <laughs> um, I mean, they think what's tough is that I always want to say, like, when we're talking about AI too, because again, like you said, that's such a. It, there's a lot of things that could be what we're talking about when we're saying that. What we're talking about right now is like consumer facing, like products. Yeah. So when you see a Google or on the shit on Spotify. Or if you have an open AI account and you're playing around with, you know, ChatGBT or whatever all the video ones are, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I forget all the Claude, whatever all the different names are. I hate them all. <laughs> Why would you ever name it Claude? That's so crazy. Yeah, because that's what they call you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, but then on the flip side of that, I do want to say, like, what we're not talking about is all of the other, like, massive, massive um, advancements in AI computing that have to deal with, I don't know, everything from, like, climate modeling right. to, like, uh, drug discovery to, yeah. like, uh, like which is, like, yeah. a whole nother, to, like, I mean, species, a bunch of the same, like, classification. Yeah. Like, there's just, which is a really important part to talk about when you're talking <laughs> about this stuff because that is that will end up shaping a lot of things that we do interface with in interesting ways. But, like, that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about with Google and LLMs and that kind of shit. No, I mean, we're talking about, I mean, this is, I think, especially when we're talking about the tidal wave of shit, what they're calling it now is slop. Slop is the new, is the word. I don't like that. That's It's too Reddit. Stop (laughs) it. I said this before, but the arc of history bends toward Reddit. Everything that you think is cool now in, look, everything is speeding up exponentially. I'm going to give it a year, two years. It's Reddit. I never thought slot was cool but then again I'm not I'm just pig. saying I'm just saying well, we can say we can call it a tidal wave of a shining elevator full of shit on, yeah. this, on this show I, I mean think. we can call We're it whatever d- you guys want I just know it when I see it <laughs> the shining elevator full of shit that's opening up is like those are all the new generative AI yeah. apps which is like large language models like ChatGPT Claude Sora that can produce text video and these are like you know cool technologies that people haven't quite figured out uses for yet except yeah. You know, in situations like Google's where what you have is this kind of open, I mean, I think the way I would think about it is, um, you know, the dominant kind of platform, the dominant kind of model for creating giant software companies for the last 15 years has been the platform. So you do a software layer that basically mediates between, you know, on Facebook, between you and your friends and your relatives. On Google, it's between you and people who publish websites and also between advertisers. Um, And platforms like are amazing businesses for the people who own them because you can just 
charge to get anybody sure. on there, more or less. I mean, you don't five, six people, seven people that are on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you have a basically infinite space in your marketplace. Like you've got a, an infinitely like yeah. you know like fillable sure. zone where you can have shit. Much and, like a lord. Yeah. And and what happened is with generative AI apps is like oh we built a machine that actually is going to fill up all these platforms with shit. Like we you have room for all of my shrimp Jesus like. I mean, I mean, have you guys seen the AI, like the Facebook AI yeah, like yeah, images, yeah, like, like, like for just... like enormous snake on a semi truck, like driving down the highway? But then with like, like some sort of Bible verse, there's yeah, always like some like religious, a soldier or something. Random yeah. religious. Why? Yeah. Why yeah. won't anybody share this? Scarlett yeah. Johansson, <laughs> food, beautiful cabin crew, beautiful exactly. Cabin crew. It's just like this is like it's funny, but to me because this is partly just like this is what platforms have been asking for. Basically, it's like right. just fill up, fill Endless us with content. whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's what's so amazing is because it feels like now the platforms are realizing that their systems, like the logic of their system will kill the platform itself. Yeah. Because you're going to reach a sort of Zizekian like <laughs> moment where it's just bots talking to bots, generating yeah. bot, generating shit, like right. where it's just machines talking to machines and we can actually maybe get on with our lives. Well, yeah, exactly. to me, To me right now, it's mostly just NPCs talking to NPCs. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's, that's the thing is like, it, it seems like this is the way that AI makes itself visible in people's lives. There's been these, and, and very similar to the coal like coin craze, right? Yeah. And like we're gonna build like the blockchain is somehow gonna give us better access to like new medicines. They always lead with like think of the new medicine discoveries and that people are disgusting now. <laughs> people are are unhealthy. They look like shit. They're fucking crumbling. I'm like I'm not so sure more of what we have now is gonna fix that. <laughs> but but I I will say I, it's it's like the way that it comes into contact with both of our lives. Like I said, it's just like. Who will give a share for these beautiful soldiers riding out a snake for Jesus Christ? Uh, and and there's these great promises, but also these great promises of great peril yeah. that are coming out. Uh, you know, you did a uh, a recent Substack post on this guy. What's his motherfucking name? Leopold Aschenbrenner. All these assholes are like shit, like Leopold. <laughs> Leopold. It's always like Leopold or. Cyrus. <laughs> Cyrus. Or like just like crazy ass names where you're like, damn, where what? You know, I know a guy named Cyrus that I like who is not evil or anything, but I will say this. I hope he doesn't hear this. It's like if you name I also know a guy named Malachi who I like. You're always talking about Malachi. I'm not always talking about Malachi. I just mentioned I know a guy named I'm I know why I'm not always talking about Malachi. <laughs> I haven't thought about Malachi in a while, but you know, I like him. Um but I feel like that's an evil name. I know a bunch of guys' brothers whose names are Rex, Darius, Thor, Cyrus, and Tamerlane. Do they Tamerlane? are they do they work in AI computing? No, a couple of them are in banks. They oh, are well. they're like kind of cool Malibu surfer guys. Okay, but rich. So sure. Um, I don't know. So I just even wanted to share. Cooler. Yeah, even cooler. They're rich and also surfers, and have and cool they work at the bank where all the money is, so they have access to be more rich. Yeah, these guys sound fucking amazing. We should have them on the show too. Thor, you dude, if them? I could get Thor where you're sitting right now, <laughs> let me tell you, this top would be on the door, hanging because it's would be wet from sweat. But uh, he wrote this paper, which yeah, Leopold, I... Leopold, sorry, not Leopold. Thor. Leopold wrote this paper, which I read yesterday. You might be the only person on the planet who read the whole thing. I read the whole Certainly thing. Certainly some AIs have read it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like 175 pages. It's long. I have it yeah. right in front of me, 165 pages. I read the entire motherfucking thing. He repeats, but he repeats himself quite yeah. often. And yeah. so, like, you do get into the, the, the rhythm of it, but... Uh, <laughs> It's it, double spaced. We it can is, say it's, and it's, it's also double, double spaced. spaced, but it's full size pages. Single column. It, there's like a. It is a wide single column. Did you read the whole thing, Liz? <laughs> no, I'm on 82 right now. Hmm. Interesting. Well, because he puts the he puts footnotes on the side. I know he of, does. He does that. But. But, 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 but. Well, if you guys are done belittling my intelligence <laughs> for having read something, um, it mostly seems to be warning in a in a way that I feel like is familiar to both of you and myself about the dangers of AGI. Mm -hmm. And AGI seems to me a nebulous concept <laughs> that we are warned about very often by generally often slovenly or in if they're not slovenly just generally unsettling mm -hmm. characters who make appearances like this you know fucking german motherfucker right here 
Austrian, Prussian, yeah. wherever he is. Uh, I think he's just German, actually, because he's. He it would be so race. crazy for someone to be like self-identify today as Prussian. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. if you know. anybody's going to do it, it's Leopold. Yeah, Oscar. yeah. No, he, he self-identifies as German. He says he was raised by his great grandmother, who was a refugee from East Germany, and which gave him his hatred of uh, authoritarian oh. values. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but so, anyways, he's warning about the dangers of of AGI. And China, which we'll get to in a second. But but AGI is... Can you tell our listeners what AGI is? Well, it stands for Artificial General Intelligence. You're, de- you're treading for water here. You're delaying. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, I mean, basically what it is, is we used to say artificial intelligence to mean computers that can think and work like humans. Mm-hmm. And then we just started calling everything that computers could do AI. So yeah. we needed to come up with a new word for the fully nebulous com- you know, idea of... HAL type, HAL 9000 type computers, and so now we call them AGI. Okay. But there's no single or specific de- definition. OpenAI, I think, who, who make ChatGPT, their definition is something like a computer that can do the intellectual work of humans better than they can. But obviously, like that that's a tautology broad. and has yeah, no <laughs> like no relationship. Which to human? Well, for example, like it would be harder to find an AGI that could do all everything that you can do than one that could do everything no, I could do. No, dude, I could be. I realized every job I've ever had, even before I knew what computers really did, because I always read a bunch of those science fiction books when I was a kid, I was like, I could be replaced in a Heartbeat. Well, have you guys seen the PDF to podcast app that just came out? There's a there's a there's a new startup that you upload a PDF and it will create a podcast for you based on the PDF oh that you can listen oh, to. No. Yeah, I, I, mean, oh, I, I was. That's I was, great news for <laughs> PhD no. students everywhere. I was reading the Hacker News thread about it, and someone was like, "Well, I tried this, and like it completely made up a bunch of references that weren't in the PDF." Yeah. And someone was like, "Yeah, but real podcast hosts hallucinate too." It's like I don't think they I, do did, that. I did. I did. I did. Race call to on, Mobuto uh, for an episode we did on Congo because I was thinking of the bad guy from fucking Zoolander the entire time. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna be honest, peek behind the curtain there. That's just what happens sometimes. <laughs> but that's that's more charming than an. I mean, maybe it's about the same level of charming. Uh, well, as here, like an here's AI the thing: the real a real people think that a podcast is just relaying information. No, a podcast is relaying mostly right information, but then being wrong on a couple things so that people feel good correcting you. That's true. I feel like everyone has a very like broad but also different and moving definition for AGI. Yes. Yeah. And so it's always it's always on the verge. It's always going to happen. Yeah. You'll know it when you see it. Yeah. Um, there's a weird thing, too, where people assume there's like a Frankenstein attitude toward it where mm-hmm. you assume that there's like a lab somewhere and someone's going to pull the big old timey yes. switch. And we like, AGI is going to be there. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole thing is, I mean, it seems really apparent to me that like, like intelligence isn't something that we've defined clearly in humans, or for that matter, in animals. So yeah. the well, idea they're that, trying to on X.com. I do it different. <laughs> right, okay, for example, maybe the scientists of X.com will eventually be able to come <laughs> up with a metric. Yeah. But, you know, this is one of those things, like, I like to think about it in terms of, like, animal intelligence, that you, you're you not going to find a bunch of people who, scientists even, marine biologists, who can agree with you about how smart a whale or a dolphin is, whether they Did have intelligence. Did you see if el- or, elephants have names for each other now? They I found love this out. Well, I told you about that thing about the isn't otters. Isn't that off? Well, no, but isn't that so amazing? Elephants call have individual names for each other. They call it, yeah, they all. It's all Dumbo one, Dumbo two, Dumbo three. <laughs> oh, it's peanut over there. The thing for me is that's more interesting than the kind of specter. I mean, I do think there's something interesting about the like PR use of AGI as it's been used when yeah. we used to just yeah. call it AI. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, but agentic AI mm-hmm. seems to be the more interesting stepping stone to me, yeah. which means a like self-directed AI that yeah. basically can, and this seems to be what Apple is kind of attempting to push forward rapidly through its like onboarding of OpenAI onto its operating system. Wow, that was a lot of mm-hmm. bullshit. Onboarding you know what I'm saying? OpenAI onto its operating system. It's, uh, That's what the you. fuck am I fucking talking <laughs> about? But no, you know but what I'm saying. On, go on. <laughs> it's fucking, I'm a moron. Anyway, <laughs> but agentic AI, meaning that it can like synthesize a bunch of different tasks, like uh, you're not related to each other, but towards a goal that it's like self-directing, that it can then like 
hone itself and it can kind of be like left alone to do on its right. own devices yeah. which is very different from the like make me a song that's Drake but singing the espresso <laughs> right, thing exactly. for my yeah. ne- nephew I mean and this is related this is like the big thing Ashen Brenner is really <laughs> obsessed with is the idea of like a super intelligence explosion like there's the hope that if you can create these self-directed AIs yeah. that you are eventually going to get an AI that can train and improve itself and once you and do other that AIs. Yeah. right and other AIs and like once you, you do can that create the dreaded PMC AI <laughs> right exactly to, to, to moderate and make oh, sure no, that we need is. HR AI. AIs AIs <laughs> mm-hmm. this is all kinds of disciplinary AIs yeah well people have written books about that he has a quote in here that I actually think is pretty good and doesn't sound as insane as most of his PDF, which I look forward to the podcast version of since I didn't read all of it. Um, he said, how all this plays out over the 2030s is hard to predict. And a story for another time, which is, by the way, that's a great. Yeah. If you're trying to write a 185-page PDF and you don't know where to go, just insert and a story for another time and <laughs> move on. But one thing, at least, is clear. We will be rapidly plunged into the most extreme situation humanity has ever faced. <laughs> Human-level AI systems, AGI, would be highly consequential in their own right. But, in some sense, they would simply be a more efficient version of what we already know. But, very plausibly, within just a year, within just a year, we would transition to much more alien systems. Systems who, whose understanding and abilities, whose raw power, would exceed those even of humanity combined. There is a real possibility that we will lose control as we are forced to hand off trust to AI systems during that rapid transition. And then I think that's like, I, I added this quote in, which is from a couple of paragraphs later. More generally, everything will just start happening incredibly fast and the world will start going insane. Which is a great line, I will say. Um, I think that this is extremely hyperbolic, and yet I also am, like, sympathetic to this because I do – I am someone who, as I try to wrap my head around and understand kind of various sectors that are, like, plunging into AI research and adopting, like, more and more of this technology, like, I actually really do think it's going to reorganize the world in really, really insane ways that are very difficult to kind of comprehend and predict. And most importantly, like, for uh, for political considerations, I think quite obviously it will be deflationary. <laughs> like, <laughs> there will be deflationary effects and there will be entire sectors that are, like, reorganized or put out of work and all of that. And that deserves, like, a lot of attention. Um but I also am like, damn, man, Leopold, you sound fucking crazy. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. And hyperbolic and also, like, self, like, it's puffing itself up, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard with these guys to, like, I mean, we were talking about this. I I think the, the LLM technologies are really cool. Like, there's just something amazing about them when you actually sit down and play around with something that can mm-hmm. produce adequate text, like, you say adequate, like I'm making fun of it, but like genuinely producing adequate text is something that most human beings can't do. So to have a computer yeah. that can do it is unbelievable. And I agree with you that there's like there are oper- you know there are people who are salivating at the labor saving costs of this of this sure. kind of technology that is likely to have really profound effects on on all kinds of different sectors and and uh, and yet like you can say all that without even needing to tip over into like. AGI, the big monster is like, going to come yeah. and kill all of us, right. and that's very scary. And in fact, I think when you start doing that, you kind of lose sight of the actual thing as it exists. And once you lose sight of that, you don't get a good sense of actually what it's going to do. Because when we talk about the labor-saving technology part of it, right? So, like, we talked about this a little bit in the last one, but one of this when I was on strike with the WGA last year, this was one of the big issues: was the idea that the uh, LLMs were going to start writing scripts or whatever. And like, very clearly, once you've played around with them for long enough, they're nowhere close to being able to write a good script. Like even a, not even close to being able to write a script that Tubi would put out yeah. with Stephen Baldwin or whatever. Yeah, like yeah, they're yeah, not. Yeah, it's yeah. not going to happen. But they are useful. Like in the end, they're actually labor saving devices for writers more than they are for like bosses. They're likely like to replace writers. And I think that if you buy into the kind of this is just a minor example of a way where you buy into the fullest version of the AI monster coming, like it becomes like screenwriters are all out of business. Right. And then you sit down with it and you think about it and you're like, actually, this is probably going to help screenwriters. It's probably going to help certain people. It's not true across every single sector or every single job, but there's like the 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 sort of the need to make this the biggest possible thing in the world that Ashen Brenner and like a million guys like him all want to believe in makes you sort of unclear about what LLMs are actually good at and what they're for, which is again like part of the Google problem too, where you're just kind of like this could be useful in some ways for some Google things, but the, when you shove it into this particular use case, it doesn't. It sucks. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's funny because about half of this, well, I'm going to say a third of this, uh, uh, this paper that, that Ashenbrenner fucking wrote, explicitly compares what the project of LLMs and AI, AGI, all this, to the Manhattan Project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and actually frames it in those terms. So people in these, like, technology sectors often like to bring up the Manhattan Project because it was kind of like, hey, look, the nerds made something. <laughs> uh, in fact, you were actually our slaves at a camp you couldn't fucking leave in in the fucking desert, and you should have stayed there. But uh, but they, um, he explicitly compares this to the Manhattan Project, not like in just like a discreet way. Like, listen, this is a time where we like had this great like leaps and forwards of technological progress, but it compares it to like the race with Germany for the bomb, yeah. which Germany was far behind us. But he makes that point explicit in 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 his writing and in interviews that he's done. Uh, and in Germany is, is replaced by, and I'm, I'm far from the gong, but actually, Max, would you strike the gong for me? Is far from. China. You know, he silenced the sustain. Wow. He silenced the sustain. That's interesting. We've got a lot to get through. We've got a lot to get through. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cut to the chase. But, uh, but, but he, he compares it to like, he compares this to the, the, the arms race with, and in the Cold War. Yeah. But, uh, but specifically to atom bombs here. One thing that I just don't understand is I'm like, if I was involved in a project that was going to make something that could, as he describing, have like AI fucking like secret police everywhere monitoring every single thing, I would, I would do everything in my power to prevent this technology from being made. Yeah. Because this presupposes an infinite democracy, which I can guarantee, he doesn't really make this clear in the uh, in this paper, but I can guarantee in his little mind, in the back of his mind, he thinks that AI will eventually, like a benevolent, democratic AI will eventually uh, run things behind the, the scenes yeah, for us. Yeah, totally. And it, it's just, it is, a, it is a vision of a future that is so nightmarish, one can barely comprehend it. <laughs> but it also isn't nightmare. It is actually just like like basic science fiction tropes. Yeah. Um, I guess what I just don't understand is how come the only, I've never heard, I, I've watched a lot of interviews with people. I've seen a lot of bullshit out there. Every time I hear about AGI, it is always in this apocalyptic terms, even for the from the people who are making who claim to be making progress towards it. Yeah. Why is that? There's sort of two things at play. Like so one is, you know, you could give a kind of like psych 101 explanation which is like when you're building these things I mean we've seen how crazy the advances have been just in the last few years yeah. and you can sort of imagine you're building these things you're a weird nerd freak you probably have a slightly fragile psyche and your brain is broken you by saw like, some shit at the ALA orgy that you can't fucking exactly you can't explain you busted in the fluffer <laughs> sorry and, <laughs> uh, but I think that the other part of it is the culture of AI research since for the last 25 years has been really focused on this for reasons yeah. that like sound crazy and it sound crazy to the extent that I don't feel like they could fully account for it but actually seem to so like um, this guy so you were talking about uh, like why are all these guys they talk about how AI is going to destroy us all and yet they keep working to build it so there's this guy Eliezer Yudkowsky oh, let yeah. me read you an email <laughs> let me read you a fucking email right now I'm sorry to pause but I actually brought this uh, I, I had this on my computer <laughs> earlier um, but uh, Eliezer was a dream guest for this show because he is well Hopefully it'll still come on, so I won't say the word, but <laughs> you can imagine. Hi, Brace. Thanks for reaching out. Unfortunately, Eliza gets far more invitations of this nature, of this nature, you've never fucking ran into a podcast like this, than he can fulfill, and he won't be able to join as a guest. We wish you the best. And then at best, Harlan. Communications Machine in- Intelligence Research Institute. Yeah. So Machine Intelligence Research Institute has been like the center of this AI research world since it was mm-hmm. founded, which was, I think, 2000. And also sex parties. Also l- tons of sex parties. Also effective altruism. I mean, all yes. of this is like this big, naughty, sort of polyamorous, like, you know, spectrum-y kind of world of philanthropy and sex. Yeah. And uh, Yudkowsky is like a... Um, rationalist. He's like the father of this whole sense yes. that AI is going to like destroy everything and he so he's like working and against And Harry Potter fan fiction. And indeed Harry Potter fan fiction. Right. Um he famously wrote a seven part Harry Potter 
in the methods of rationality is what it's called. What? Do you not? You didn't. You so don't where, know this? the, the no. um, after you said no, the well, now I, I know what I'm getting printed and bound mind. for the Belgian. Mm-hmm. Is it sexy? No, it's actually quite rational. <laughs> to, to, but to me, sex is perhaps the highest form of rationality. Do you think those are on two different poles? Those are opposing <laughs> To forces. me, sex is irrational. To, 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 to two bodies convulsing in such a manner Bashing to me and, and, and is, is Especially in a, in a funky wizarding world. <laughs> and, yes, exactly. uh, and unfortunately, you have to allow for air like the fluffer. But. Yeah. Um, so he, so <laughs> to finish that, so the, the, all of the magic tricks in Harry Potter are explained using method, rational scientific methods. <laughs> <laughs> seven, there's seven of these books. Um, and something about AI, the AI research world seems to have attracted the kind of people who are into the kind of thing like Harry Potter and the methods of rationality. And my, the, my best sense is that there is like the, the continuing cult-like culture of this whole world yeah. has sort of cultivated mm. in, in a bunch of AI researchers You're this sense of... You're suggesting it's kind of reinforcing a yes. loop maybe? I mean, I would also say like if you polled AI researchers as a category like around the world, like I don't actually think that most of them are this level of like scared of I think yeah. they some of them might make the same kind of arguments that Liz is just making about like the way it's going to you know reshape the global economy or whatever and that's dangerous but I think there's a, a a extremely vocal and prominent but relatively small probably a minority of people who for whom this is like the whole thing I mean one of the things about I, I, one of the the things that Ashen Brenner is interesting about Ashen Brenner is that he's he's 23 and when he was he matriculated at Columbia when he was 15 He's a like, very smart young kid. Mm. And when he was 18, he got a grant from Tyler Cowen, the um, yeah. George Mason University economist, mm-hmm. just to go live in San Francisco and like meet a bunch of people, basically. Because Cowen crazy. thought he was a, a like an economics prodigy, basically. Interesting. When I have paid young men to come to San Francisco and meet a bunch of my friends, it becomes a national news story. I, I mean, I can't, I can't speak to the political bias of the news, Grace. Mm-hmm. Um, so he so so he goes out there and he meets a bunch of these people. He ends up Ashen Brenner ends up working for not FTX but for the I, the Future Fund, which was SBF's yeah. like effective altruism thing. Yeah, and moves from there to OpenAI. So this all this all happened between the ages of nineteen and twenty three, basically. Um, and I, I always thought about it like. So I went to a uh, I went to a nerd camp when I was a kid called what? the Center for Talented Youth. To see I went to CTY, which is an East Coast like nerd camp thing. You had to take the SATs in middle school and you go. And you know if you're my age, you can guess the kind of kids who also went to nerd camp. And like a lot of there's a lot of Monty Python. There's a lot of like sort of quasi proto goth like you know thirteen year olds. Gotcha. It's all really intense. I Everybody thought you were just really, going to say Asian. <laughs> well, I mean, I think... Was there I, a lot of theater work? <laughs> there was... Yeah, but I mean, I'm th- the people I hung out with were sort of gothy, gotcha. yeah, computer were, yeah. science-y, like I'm admitting something about a myself. I invented cigarette to smoke right. behind the gym. And my main memory of it is like, it was really emotionally intense and yeah. people really thought really highly of themselves and their capabilities. And in uh, retrospect, like, wow, like what a bad environment for anybody to spend time in. <laughs> did, any, and, did any geniuses come out of that motherfucker? I don't know, maybe. I mean, if any of them are listening, if any members, if any CTY Lancaster 2000, 2001 is <laughs> uh-huh. listening. Feel free to reach out, maxreed at gmail.com. Um, if you're a genius, especially if you've got a lot of money and you'd yeah, like yeah. To, yeah. to take me to Even just self described genius. <laughs> yeah. That's the best kind. But okay. anyway, I, I, I say that because it's like, I think that this world is that for adults kind yeah, of this right. like really intense hothouse, uh, strange hothouse environment. And somebody like Ashen Brenner. I suppose he's a he's he's obviously a v- smart guy and getting paid by a weird economist to go just hang out with a bunch of sex perverts who think the world is going to end. Yeah, like b- b- breaks a lot of brains, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's the best that's the best answer I have. Well, it's, he thing. does seem. Listen, I I I don't think that they should let children go to college. I think that you should have to do like you should have to be socialized. You should get high paid school. to not go to well, get paid not to go to San Francisco. Get paid to go to Cincinnati and yes. like work as a third grade teacher. Exactly. Oh, I just think roommates. that like I think that that no one learns anything in high school. The thing that you learn how to do is smoke cigarettes and lose your virginity. That's <laughs> not true. I not didn't learn anything learned. in high school. Not, not I did. All that. I've learned is from high school. <laughs> I, all I learned how to do in high school was to be normal. And well, or to, <laughs> I, I learned a, a lot of things in high school, but uh, nothing of them involving school, like teaching. Yeah. It socializes you, yeah, yeah. And like, I think that's a big 
I, I, I don't think being a gifted kid is good for you. No, I mean this is this is what they say about gifted and talented programs now is they 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 warp kids, and I yeah. do I really do think that like these environments, there's all these cults that are attached to yeah, to Miri, like that that are sort of weird effective altruism. They get into like Bayesian statistics yeah. as a like religion more or less, yeah. and they think, I mean I don't know, and My I just friend's think, brother is <laughs> so you kind of like I don't know at that point it starts to seem normal to think that a giant machine god is going to come. But tell at you the how to same do time, like if you're talking about he went out there when he was what ni- what did you say 19, 19 I think yeah. so like 4 or 5 years ago like then the the exponential growth that he's witnessed not even I mean who knows behind the scenes what he's seen yeah. but also like even what we've seen out of these products it's almost like I mean I know this sounds like now I'm going to sound like an AI guy but maybe I am AI guy but like what what ChatGPT was doing in yeah. ChatGPT one versus what it can do now versus like what any kind of image generator could do yeah. in like twenty sixteen totally. it's yeah. like unrecognizable yeah. and I mean I, we were joking before we started the show but I was saying like the next leap will be like in a year year and a half where it's like make me an RPG and now you just have your own personalized whatever you want like literally immersive world that you can have built for you in an instant yeah. that you can play around with or whatever and that's just consumer again just this yeah. is consumer right. so i mean I, this is why i think if you it, like when you combine the actual hard advancements that you can yeah. witness with the like environment where you're being exactly. told so like open ai like ilya sutskever who was the um mm-hmm. i'm probably mispronouncing all these names because i want to read weird. them um was the like the genius was sort of the computer genius of yeah. open ai and he was he recently left and he was on the board and was one of the people who fired sam Altman. The big brouhaha. Yeah, the ethical Sutskever. So he, <laughs> he, um, he was, he would like hold like mystical ceremonies more or less where he would like make an effigy of AGI of unaligned AGI and burn it and stuff I also heard this is a podcast so I'm allowed to just say things I've heard without sourcing them I heard that Aschenbrenner when he was working at OpenAI was once asked to leave an all hands meeting because he started sobbing because he realized that they were creating God so I think there is like a little bit of a instability going on it's crazy because the other day in our meeting when you had to leave uh, this is we are going to make the best best mini series (laughs) it's crazy because even Jesus didn't well, I guess he did weep a little bit up there. I don't really get what was going on when he was up there. But uh, <laughs> like, what was what? going through his fucking dome when he? Jesus it was, was the crown of thorns. I know, but when no, in his brain, dude. Thank what's you. going on in his fucking? What are you Wasn't thinking? He was, he was, well, he's mad at his dad. Yeah, but like, what's he really thinking? Yeah, I don't you know, know what I mean? Because like, well, you're there's thinking, an AI, AI for that. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm gonna ask. Uh, but yeah, it's like. It, these the culture at these places seems so like I, it, part of me believes that they have to believe all of this, yeah. yeah. Or else you're like, I am making a uh, fucking like infinite Banksy style pictures of Sora <laughs> or whatever. But I also want to pull back and say like it's not just that's what we're yes. seeing. That's yeah. what we gets rolled out for fine tuning yeah. other stuff. Like the flip side of that is the understanding that like literally like I mean climate change as a concept is not even re- it, like. E- that concept can't e- isn't even possible without any kind of like planetary scale computing. Yeah. Right. Like we are only able to understand yeah. and model the past, the present, and the f- and possible futures for how the climate will change, which then like gives rise to it I, even as a subject because of the advancements of you know massive AI computing, and that's going to be incredibly important for any kind of. You know, if that's like if you if you're a person who believes that like that's the future we're staring at, which I think we're all kind of in that, you know, we're all there, like then these tools are like that these are the only tools that will get us out of that or help us to plan any kind of possible future moving forward. And so I think that like I can see being in that room and understanding that. Yeah. That's just what I understand. I don't even understand what they're talking about, like behind the curtains or whatever, of the kind of possibilities for the sorts of like central planning systems yeah. that they're going to, that they're organizing for like a possible, um, I mean, it's really like a global, you know, a global economy that, I mean, there's a, it's not even fake too. I mean, this all has like a physical yeah. reality as well, right? Where you have an entire planet now that is kind of like coded in fiber optic cables yeah. and data centers that are kind of carved into the landscape now. And this is actually both physically and subjectively like like 
transforming the world. Yeah, totally. I mean, this is, I mean, it's hard to like. I get, like, I get into this like crazy person's, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm a little loopy myself. But Well, I mean, I think it's worth saying, like you were saying, you know, we see the shitty, like, like when you have ChatGPT making like writing adequate writing or whatever, that's also like the version of the LLM that's been like speaking, setting aside even the sort of climate change, drug development, um, uh, like there's all kinds of like high level physics applications yeah. for like Tokamaks. I don't even know what that is, but I know that that you can use AI to build better ones. That that even with LLMs, the things that create all the bullshit we see, the versions we get are these like heavily trained to be as anodyne as possible yeah. for like obvious reasons. But you know, we were we were talking about like could you get an LLM to like do Joyce? And like yeah, you could get one to do some version of Joyce for what's available on the consumer side. But you could also train one up and and presumably you know if you have access to the kind of resources that somebody like OpenAI does to do. Joyce or whatever at an even higher kind of uh, level of capability. I mean, this sounds, uh, as I say it out loud, it does sound pretty ridiculous. And I'm well, not saying you're going to write a new portrait of a young man, portrait of the artist as a young man, but you can do stuff that I don't think is really possible just with chat GPT if you have access to the pre-trained or the sort of differently trained models. And I think if you have access to those regularly, if you're Leopold Aschenbrenner, if you're a researcher, you have a uh, a better sense of like the sort of true capabilities of these. Even if those capabilities don't reach the level level of AGI, whatever that means, or ap- apocalypse, whatever that would mean, they're they're beyond what we can actually see on our computers. Plus, if you're trying to do a Finnegan's Wake thing, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference with a hallucination. That's true. <laughs> well, I, I, I think, I mean, my main problem, and I feel like I bring this up every time we talk about technology in general, mm-hmm. or like have an episode about technology, but especially AI, is... is and I, and I, I can't put this really into like maybe the most coherent way, but like it seems just in my lifetime that like integration of technology into like every single one of our interactions with each other or with the outside world, not every single one, but so many of them in some small or large way has like annihilated the minds of so many people <laughs> yeah. that I know personally. Like, I mean, I think the most obvious way th- that it, it manifests in people's lives is like lack of attention span or people... I cannot tell you how many times I've I've heard people I know say like I never read books anymore. Yeah. You know? Um or, or it's hard for me to read books now yeah. because my attention span is is so dismal. Um and and it it's it's it I think that's what's heartbreaking about me because like yeah, I think like we have basically an infinite timeline, I guess, of just like the world going on, presumably nothing nothing happens. And so like basically anything you could imagine is theoretically possible in some way. I don't know. Uh, it, or or maybe it'll happen soon. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any of this shit. But I I just I like it. What, what worries me is just like the soul of man is just like <laughs> it's dissolved and like in this this and and the, the you know I think I, it's just the, the world is going to shit. Everything feels like shit. I think to everybody. And even if you're doing all right, I think people aren't very happy. Or there's just like there's 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 like there's like a gray cloud, and it seems like the 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 out the, the, the these people present Musk is very much like on this tip of like we are stagnating, which they can they can understand that like in, in some effable and ineffable ways. And technology is our sort of escape valve of this, mm-hmm. like these massive in- leaps and in- increases in technology, where where it just precisely the opposite seems to have been true for the past couple of decades. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I mean it, it's it's funny because I've always thought when we talk about AI, I'm always like, you want to make robot slaves? Like this, <laughs> you can't do that. You and I was like, I gotta, I gotta. Okay, that's, that seems wrong to me. But I'm like, also fuck the robots. I hate robots. But like reading Ashen Bruner's fucking manifesto, he's a little my struggle shit here. I'm like, I both. This makes me want to join both the robots and be there like a secret police in the ro- for the robots or the Chinese. <laughs> because one of the big things they're talking about here is that if the Chinese get their hands on this stuff. Yeah. And I can see this. I mean, I don't can't actually see it in terms of like what's happening now this but I feel like this is a trial balloon in some way. Um uh, like China, we need an adversary. If we're building the atomic bomb, we need an adversary to build it against. Yeah. And China is the only other country that any of these people can think of. Yeah. Uh and <laughs> and uh and I, I wonder because half of the shit is about how China is going to build AGI and then make the world into China, who yeah. they're all slaves in China and blah, 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 blah. Uh, 
And I just I wonder if that is going to be more mainstream in terms of tech stuff. I think definitely. I mean, I think the context that we didn't talk about is that this document was released the same week that Ashen Brenner announced a new AI investment fund that's backed by a bunch of guys. Um, Nat Friedman, who's the former GitHub CEO, who's sort of involved in San Francisco politics on the tech reaction side, and the Collison brothers, who uh, are the Stripe founders and are also sort of San Francisco reactionaries. And uh, I think part of what's happening, I don't know what's in Ashton Brenner's mind. I know that we hate to attribute cynical and greedy motives to people on this program. But I suspect that somebody who wants to get a lot of tech money right now wants to put national security concerns at the top of their sort of interests, both because both because he's a former EA guy and effective altruism is out. Effective altruism totally out in the valley. David Shore, no! (laughs) And you can get to suck Sean McElwee from the back! (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I do have I have more gossip, which is that Ashen Brenner's current girlfriend is David Shore's ex girlfriend. Wow. The, in, in, the, 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 the tangled web they weave. Uh, the tangled web we weave. And I, like a fly, I'd like to fly into it and have them all devour me at the same time. It's <laughs> crazy how much Sam Jailman Jail uh, tanked EA. It's like yeah. kind of incredible. Well, I mean, come on. That's your main guy. <laughs> I know, but it's you like, know? Of all, it's, it's pretty, you know, yeah, didn't, know, didn't put that one down when he was like, you know, weighing all his options I suppose but the I mean the other thing is like they there seems to be a real shift in the valley especially sort of in the right wing uh-huh. faction oh, toward yeah. like national security yeah. uh, like defense contracting it, because that's where there's money I mean they, yeah. they look at the horizon they think industrial policies in they think yeah. you know it's easier to get money this way and so they have an interest in saying China is going to enslave us with robots that suck us off till we die mm-hmm. very soon milk us and if, 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 if and milk COVID. you robots. Yeah. did you guys watch that toilet brush back scratcher video I sent you guys? No, I didn't look I at it. You send me videos that, s- and you I just I never say, send you videos. No, when you do send videos and you're like, did you see this? I'm like, I'm not fucking watching this. I will I'm say, not watching any video the dog part? The I dog got part? to that was when I turned it off. Uh, okay, well, it only goes on about 30 seconds after that. I was going to say, that's what China's going to do to us. <laughs> Watch that video. We'll, li- we'll link to it. I uh, think like just r- some just important context too is that these guys know that the money that is required to achieve what they want to achieve, like, we were just talking about it. Some of these models now are, I think the latest models are, it requires like a hundred million dollars yeah. Yeah. Um, for like compu- on computing costs. Like it is not, and, and um, Leopold says himself, you know, it seems crazy that we would reach a trillion dollars in 2025, but maybe that, that does not seem crazy to me. Like the yeah. numbers that get thrown out of, you know, it's going to be, you know, a, a billion dollars to run these models. The only scale that makes sense on this is cor- is uh, governments. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's beyond the scope even of corporations. Right. Um, Especially because most of these haven't, I mean, OpenAI doesn't turn a profit as far as we know. No. Like they don't, they, they haven't figured out the killer. Well, well one of the things that, that Leopold talks about consistently throughout this is the need for regulation, but really what he wants is basically ease of making these big compute centers uh, by by shifting regulation to allow for more power to be yeah. given to them, like literal like yeah. electric power to be given to them, uh, and like actual regulations around AI to be t- kind of geared towards this national security thing. You know, it, a lot of people made a lot of hay about uh, Sam, uh, what's his fucking Altman. name? Altman. Uh, Sam, Alt, Sam Altrock. Fucking touring around, doing his little like glad handing tour about like, oh, we need regulation, we need regulation, and and it, the obvious reason is like they want regulation that helps them actually do this more profitably yeah. and with uh, and also undercutting any future regulation that might cut into any profits totally. or or progress that they make, which are the same thing. Um, and he seems to take like an, an even more clear eyed view of this, and like we should actually put this under the aegis of government or like a private partner, public partnership here under the national security umbrella, because yeah, there's infinite money there. Yeah, I mean, he wants to create a military technological complex yeah. that yeah. like he's at the center of. I mean, this goes back to something we were talking about before with the bomb. Like one of the sort of interesting sort of like contradictions that comes up with these guys is they always talk about it. They like to think about AI and LLMs as a sort of general purpose technology like mm-hmm. electricity or computers um, but they only ever talk about it like 
the nuclear bomb, which is obviously not a general purpose technology. No. It's a single shot. You know, it, it does one thing and it does it really well, but it doesn't do a lot of other stuff. And there's a weird way that like they they, they you have to choose: is this a general purpose technology that's going to make us all millionaires as businessmen, or is this the bomb and we're going to be Lockheed or Northrop Grumman or whatever? Well. One thing that they never they never answer either, and like it's it's so strange. They always gloss over this. Is like okay, say that like there are by several OOMs, this this fucking the <laughs> the AI increases its its power, right, <laughs> and is able to do a lot of white collar jobs, and in fact replace white collar workers in the way that like or at least down have the you were able to downsize any sort of like office firm that you have in much the same way that factories now employ significantly less people. You know that work is automated. Mm -hmm. um, what are those people going to do for jobs? And like, this is one thing with like how they're trying to do the self-driving cars. And yeah. stuff. I always think about this. The number one job that people have in this country is trucking. If we replace truck drivers with like robot driven trucks, we have millions of people out of work then. Yeah. If we replace like, you know, office workers with fucking, you know, open AI seven or whatever, then you're also going to have millions of people out of work. And there, there is no, it, it seems like there, there, there isn't even like in the, in the sort of hedging way that they sometimes talk about stuff. They just completely gloss over that. Yeah. I mean, we are a country without any kind of like welfare. I mean, we have a very, very <laughs> tiny welfare state, but certainly nothing that you can live off for the rest of your life. If you're like used to living this middle-class lifestyle. Yeah. Um, I just I'm confused as to what they envision for the future here. I mean, I think that they there's a sort of if you're a true believer, and yeah. I think Ashen Brenner is, like you think the big computer god is going to fix it all. Like yeah. you, you don't have to worry about who's going to have what the jobs are because yeah. the computer god's going to figure, figure it out. It out. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. literally, you're going to put in the data and the computer. I mean, a lot of them say this is that like one of the one of the ways we'll know it's AGI is when it's able to give us answers that we ourselves could not come up yeah. with. And there's a lot of ways that you can kind of think about that. It's like a little trippy. But I do think a lot of people are sort of like, well, we can just push that can down yeah. the road. It doesn't matter. Um, one, because we're not, oh, that's for the politicos to decide. Yeah. That's always easy. And two, yeah, the supercomputer god is going to, he'll just come up with a new or she. Um, it's going to come up with the you know, computer guy yeah, is gonna it's going to come up with an answer and it'll be fine I mean I think a lot of people that's where a lot of these like UBI people come in and yeah. they say you know what we need to do is just expand no, now this is how everyone can become middle class yeah. right because the middle class is that kind of very nebulous a uh, class with a very specific relation to a certain kind of production, but not in the same way that a uh, kind of like classic, like petty bourgeois is, um, but a kind of, you know, I would say like intellectual production, but it's primarily a consumption class. And if everyone then just becomes consumed, I mean, this is my whole point about it becoming deflationary. And yeah. I think that a lot of the, the kind of economic, you know, response then is, well, if there's going to be a massive deflationary um, pressure as we automate ma a lot of industries, which, by the way, a lot of these companies have a lot of labor-saving interest in trying to automate things like software engineering mm -hmm. and, you know, reducing their own headcounts where they're kind of exploring a lot of these opportunities. But then, you know, how can we you know, what's a sort of like inflationary push or what? what's a kind of, you know, what can we do to you know, um, strengthen consumption. And it's like, oh, well, if we just expand the consumer class, yeah. then, then you know, maybe we got, th maybe, you know, maybe demand. the kitchen will be cooking. Then. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think, like, realistically, though, it strikes me that, the at least in the, the near term, like, the main thing is not going to be that good at replacing white collar jobs. That ultimately it's probably going to create yeah. more jobs, people who become technicians for figuring out how to do this shit. Yeah, in, supervisors. In, yeah, exactly. I mean, somebody, I can't remember who now, but somebody was comparing it to like the introduction of Excel and VisiCalc, which were like the original spreadsheet softwares that initially were thought of as going to just eliminate whole rafts of accountants and, you know, bean counters from their jobs, mm -hmm. but actually didn't really do that at all. And in fact, like destroyed a lot of companies who really just tried to like throw their yeah. accountants out and just we're not good enough at it, um, you know. And it's it it does seem to me like if the U.S. political economy is like good at one thing, it's at like just figuring out new bullshit jobs to 
to give to people rather than having a welfare state or UBI mm-hmm. or like direct, um, you know, demand inflation or whatever. It's like, no, we'll just invent a whole new kind of middle manager who has to be there for the AI. Well, I'd like to read, it's going to wrap up here. I'd like to read a part of Leopold's, well, the end, really. It's called under a section called The End Game. <laughs> and so, by 27, 28, he's talking about 28, 2027, 20, 2028, 20, the end game will be on. By 28, 29, the intelligence explosion will be underway. By 2030, we will have summoned superintelligence. They always talk about it like that. Mm-hmm. And all its power and might. Whoever they put in charge of the project, capital, is oh, like capital letters, not capital, uh, is going to have a hell of a task to build AGI and to build it fast, to put the American economy on wartime footing, to make hundreds of millions of GPUs, to lock it all down, weed out the spies, and fend off all out attacks by the CCP, to somehow manage 100 million AGIs furiously automating AI research, making a decade's leaps in a year, and soon producing AI systems vastly smarter than the smartest humans to somehow keep things together enough that this doesn't go off the rails and produce rogue super intelligence that tries to seize control from its human overseers. Interesting language there. To use those super intelligences to develop whatever new technologies will be necessary to stabilize the situation and stay ahead of adversaries, rapidly remaking U.S. forces to integrate those, all while navigating what will likely be the tensest international situation ever seen. They better be good. I'll say that. For those of us who get the call to come along for the ride, it'll be space, ellipses, another space, stressful. <laughs> but it will be our duty to serve the free world and all of humanity. I know this is long, but it's I'm loving it. If we make it through and get to look back on those years, it will be the most important thing we ever did. If we make it through... And while whatever secure facility they find probably won't have the pleasantries of today's ridiculously overcomped AI researcher lifestyle, it won't be so bad. SF already feels like a peculiar AI researcher college town. That's so true. (laughs) Probably this won't be so different. It'll be the same weirdly small circle sweating the scaling curves during the day and hanging out over the weekend, kibitzing over AGI and the lab politics of the day. Except, well, the stakes will be all too real. See you in the desert, friends. Wow. Somebody saw Oppenheimer. Desert. Somebody Good saw Oppenheimer, yeah. God, man. <laughs> I do wonder, though. I mean, I wonder, you know, if you have a kind of U.S. economy as it stands now and, like, it's not looking it's not looking great mm-hmm. for the foreseeable future, <laughs> um, you know, and you have, I, you know, I just saw on the way here, it's like, you know, Yellen was on TV um, talking about like really, really reiterating how much the the need for public private partnership, basically meaning like we need to be fiscally spending into industry and like trying to kind of spur some economic growth because GDP, it's not good, yeah. you know, and it's not good across the board in a lot of countries. Um, but so you wonder where there's a world in which you see that happening, right? Where you see what, what he's talking about. I mean, not in his weird kind of fanfic mm-hmm. writing style, though I do appreciate it <laughs> um, and particularly appreciate your reading of it. Um, but I could see the U.S., I mean, especially depending on the, which way the election goes, kind of going all in or partly all in with some of these guys. When you know, so it makes sense, th- you know, placing all of their chips on the China thing. Yeah. You know, to make the argument work because they need the fucking money. Yeah, and I think it sounds to me like Ashton Brenner would like to be in charge. Uh, It's a real like like, Dick Cheney heading up the Bush like vice presidential search. He's like, if I get the call, and then he ends up like, see you in the desert. It's like, okay, (laughs) well, you think you're going to get the call, Ashton Brenner? Why do I have to do it in the desert again? Also, I think it would be so. Oh, we'll be putting these people in the desert. It's so funny to think like, oh, you guys have like these really comfortable lives in the San Francisco Bay Area, like perfect climate, very cozy. They probably have some really nice, like, $4 million like townhouses, you know, Victorian, Classico style. You don't have to worry about, you take your little, like, self-driving car to work. Like, everything's great. And it's like, your ass is going to fucking Bakersfield because we're not making it all the way down to, we're not doing Los Alamos again. No. We gotta find a different place. We're gonna stay in northern, Cal- slightly northern central mm-hmm. California. And have fun. 
stick them in Nowheresville and see what they do. Oh, how are they going to live without a DoorDash? I They're going to be like, how well, do we the, get food? Well, they don't. You don't make your own food at the at the tech. There's a cafeteria. Like the Alice Alice. You gotta have a cafeteria. Yeah, you, know, you, gotta you gotta have, have a the, cafeteria. They didn't have Oppenheimer in there cooking up the damn noodles. Well, maybe they should this time. They should. No, well, I think what 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 I would like, a future that I envision, is where all the jobs that are done by AI are actually done by this guy and all his friends for no pay. And they uh wear kind of like like it like an S and M kind of outfit mm-hmm. and I walk them on leashes through San Francisco. So I'm like, can you can you make Drake sing espresso? I'm like and then you sing espresso like Drake, Leopold. I love Sit, that. With all the words. With all the words of exp- <laughs> I don't know. I I've only heard about half of it. One but of the words is espresso. Espresso. Yeah. Say yeah. it. And that that's that's that me. That's that um, me espresso. <laughs> I wanna hear him say it while I just beat him. That's that's reinforcement learning with human feedback. That is facts right there. <laughs> well, I don't know if you guys know about this, but the, a lot of these guys want to make a uh, city campus in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, we should do an episode on that maybe, where they just want to like make several neighborhoods that people live in in San Francisco, very dense city, <laughs> uh, into like a tech small town. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's also, yeah, the, between that and the Balaji network, network states... Well, Oof, a lot to talk about there. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Max, well, I'll plug your Substack for you, even though it's going to get me in trouble with Twitter, but I'll still say it. Thank you. Go to Read Max, a little pun there on his name, which is Max Red. Max Reed. Max Reed. Max, what's your middle name? Uh, the letter B. <laughs> Wait, what? Wow. It's just the letter B. I don't have. Is it Harry S. Truman? The S doesn't stand for anything. Wait, Max B. Reed. Max B. Reed. My my real name is Malcolm. I was my on my birthday. Your real name is Malcolm. Malcolm B. Reed. Yeah, but you change it out of deference. I've always been called Max. I, my parents didn't think that it was. They wanted a longer name, and Malcolm. What a longer name! I like Max. Is well, too Malcolm's short, a little in the middle, so it's kind of okay. Tough. Okay. Ah, Wait, yeah, your yeah. parents were like, joke. "We need a long name for our son." It was 1985. Yeah, they were in their 30s. Like this, there was so much cocaine must have been being consumed that entire. My name is Brent. I hope they're not listening. I mean, yeah. who knows what was happening? My real name is Gretchen, though. Oh, Gretchen. I know, because you know how guys are named Lindsay sometimes. Yeah. You can go your own way. My parents were trying to make that with Gretchen. Didn't work. Didn't work. Now yeah. I had to start going by Brace. <sighs> well, you can read his uh, damn Substack at Read Max. What is the what is it's the URL? It's maxread.substack.com. Okay, well, Max. I know it's confusing. I'm sorry. Max now you're <laughs> mm-hmm, but So it's a flip of the name of mm-hmm. the Substack. Yeah. It's just the name of the Substack. What does flipped? Substack mean? What do you mean? Substack? I don't know. Is that a tech know. thing? There's no name. Na- na- subscription. No substack. I think it's subscription. Su- I'm here on the substack. What does that mean? I think <laughs> it stands, stands for subscription. Subscription or stack. Like subscription shortened. stack? Yeah, like a st- yeah, that makes sense. A stack, My of stack of subscriptions? Like a stack of magazines. Penthouse, Playboy, Maxim. Read Max. Maxim like that? Read like, Max. Those are the four. <laughs> I will say, I do only read Max the articles. Because the pictures are, let me just say that this man has... Uh, a little bit of a problem with The Simpsons. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Well, after an interview, you know what I like to do? is I like to have a White Claw seltzer with lots of new flavors that are coming out every single day. Are people still drinking that? Black cherry. Yeah, I think so. That's weird. But I have to finish the ad read. Oh, sorry. Black cherry <laughs> is now coming out. Cherry Lime blossom and rose mm. is now coming out. Right. Uh, and lychee. And lychee is now, is, is going to be available soon in some states, banned unfortunately in Delaware, California, New York, and Florida. But uh, White Claw is a low-calorie alternative to uh, beer that makes you feel bloated and funky and makes you pee a lot. White Claw actually does not recycle. It purely absorbs. So you will not urinate at all unless you invite some outside liquid besides, besides like White Claw. Ugh. 
We should start doing ads. We should. But you know what? We shouldn't do them for uh, for companies. Like We, we should, should just do just, ads for what? Yeah. We, no, no. Like, we should just pick something and be like, let's just do an let's ad just, for this. Because we can do ads without like, getting paid for it. We're not going to get paid for it. Yeah. We just come up with our own ads. That's a good idea. What should... Oh, fuck. I have to advertise something. You do? The thing we just talked about. Yes. I w- oh, I wasn't listening. <laughs> okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, listen the fuck up. Alcatraz... You know The Rock? Welcome to The Rock. Yeah, of course. Have you seen the movie? This is not a joke. Are you kidding? Have I seen the movie? I own so it good. and I have it's for so like 15 good. billion it's years so on good. Criterion, the double disc version. Well, if you've ever been like, I love that movie. I want to go get some of them poison balls from Alcatraz. Huh, how do I get there? I ride the ferry, right? What? Poison balls? Oh, from the movie. From the fucking movie. Yeah, yeah he's got the string of pearls. Yeah, the ball, of the, ball, the poison yeah. pearls. Really elegant string of pearls configuration. Unfortunately, incredibly unstable. The nuclear But guys. you have to get there on the ferry, right? Mm. And or now, you could swim. Or you could, well, hmm, I could do it. I, someone I know did it before. I think I could do it. I, I, it doesn't seem that, oh, well, yeah, don't get me started. You might be like, oh, I got to ride the ferry there. Tickets on the ferry is forty five dollars to get there. Well, Wait, I'm sure these true? worker. Well, it's probably a ticket for the place too. I'm sure these workers get paid a lot. In fact, many of them actually only get paid nineteen dollars an hour. Because of this, they unionize with the Inland Boatmen's Union, which is a part of ILWU. This happened very re- well, not too recently, but in the past couple of years, they are now trying to get a contract. Ahead of that contract. Alcatraz Cruises LLC uh, is now hiring strike breakers in order to bust up negotiations for a contract oh, for their unionized workforce. Okay. Because there is, I mean, who knows? But obviously, if they're hiring strike breakers, they think it's something going to happen. These ads for this work are on Indeed.com. Hmm. Now, I'm not saying you should click on that link and apply. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm just saying that we're going to put the link in the in the description for so this episode. So you could see for informational purposes. Do whatever you want with that. It's just purely for info. It's a public website. Sure. Indeed.com. But I, I mean, just, they want people to apply. They want people to apply. That's it why It doesn't it's say on you there. have to live in San Francisco. About you section just says this person will be adaptable, dynamic, and embody uh, pr- an, uh, a capital letter city experiences even more capital letters, respect service system. Um, and it says also important since Alcatraz Cruises LLC is engaged in collective bargaining, the above wages are subject to change. See attorney guidance attached. I think that you should, this is a good opportunity for anybody to look at out of state. Just look at it. Just out, just look at it and just look at it and send, send your shit in too. You know, you had to say you have a Twit card and say that you have a, a, a merchant mariners, uh, license as well mm. uh just because maybe that's something you want in your life i have those things yeah um and maybe i'll actually i probably will literally apply after this uh but yeah so just i know that many of you need jobs and this is a wonderful opportunity that was a great ad read thank you that uh, on call deckhand alcatraz city experiences san francisco california <laughs> all right uh well with that being said my name is fucking Captain Jack Sparrow. I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> I've been a pirate in the Caribbean for many years now. Of of who's the chicken, Kira Knightley? I think I shagged Kira, but they took me off of the they took me off of the Pirates of the Caribbean due to a court case. But lots of women have problems, and me too. Okay, well it wasn't me too. You're right. It wasn't me too. I was just struggling to remember what happened. I was like, <laughs> we uh, did like a four-hour episode on. I know, but then I got so pissed off thinking about it anymore. I that know. was one of those things where, like, people on the internet people went insane, insane over that. Everyone's insane. Everyone's fucking. This is my problem. Is like, and I was kind of trying to like elaborate on this during the episode a little bit when I was like talking about like everything is all fucked up. Yeah, everyone is insane. Like I just like yeah. everyone's crazy. Yeah. I think it makes me makes me feel crazy. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, my name is Bryce. I'm Liz. We are, of course, as always, joined by producer Young Chomsky. <laughs> we say that he's from Young. He's producing it. Brian. Brian's out. Brian Epstein. We didn't like his brother, as as uh, Jeremy Corbyn would call it. Brian Epstein. He's out. We've replaced him. I'm really the actually. What's the name of the there. podcast? The podcast. The po- podcast is called Tr- True and On. 
<laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> Jeff Jeff.